Is Mama Melrose finally better than Olive Garden? <laughs> Let's see. Hello everyone, I'm Jay. And I'm Sam. And you are watching the Theme Park Foodies and we are back at Disney's Hollywood Studios to dine at their signature Italiano Ristorante, Mama Melrose. We've had a video on them years back and we watched it before we came here and it is not good. We don't recommend watching it. Uh, we were using the old camera, we actually filmed a GoPro then, the sound wasn't good. Uh, but I remember us, not that we hated it, not that we trashed it, I, I just to say, I'm actually a fan of Olive Garden cuisine, although I don't think it's as good as like true Italian cuisine. I don't think it's, I don't, wouldn't consider it like Italian cuisine. You they have to be in the mood for Olive Garden. Yes. It's a different kind of Italian. They got good breadsticks, they got good salads. So what they do, they do well. And when we ate at Mama Melrose, I remember that was like my sentiment. I felt like it was like Disney's version of Olive Garden. Not bad, was it? wouldn't be super disappointed, uh, but it was pretty pricey for what it was. However, they've revamped the menu like huge, right Sam? Yeah, they have so many new dishes and then some of the dishes that stayed, they just like modified them in certain ways. And I feel like a lot of people don't even know about this restaurant because it's like hidden in the yeah. back lot of Hollywood Studios. Yeah, it's actually in Muppets Courtyard. So it existed before Muppets Courtyard. It, it opened during the early days here of Disney's Hollywood Studios, and it's considered a backlot. It was like so kind of part of the uh, backlot area, and it was a restaurant. There's actually a story that goes along with that, right? Yeah, so Mama Melrose, she came from Sicily. She wanted to make it big as an actress, but then she decided that she had more of a passion and love for cooking. So she started cooking for her actor friends yeah. out of an old backlot, and here we are. Here we are at Mama Melrose. It is a beautiful interior decor. It's styled very nicely. I remember I loved the atmosphere last time we were there. This is, it is a little dark inside, but I do think it has a very nice aesthetic. It's actually right next to Kermit um, in like his tuxedo. His fancy, fancy Kermit. Yeah, Muppet Vision 3D actually releases right in front of the restaurant. So we'll show you guys how to get there. We're gonna dine on their new dishes. I hear their mozzarella sticks have been revamped and are very good. They actually revamped a bunch of the menu and they have a new bolognese dish that sounds very good. Anything you have your eye on, Sam? I definitely want the mozzarella stick. I'm not sure. I think there was also a Mama's pasta with chicken that I think mm. I was we get a new pizza too. Oh yes, with honey and prosciutto. Yeah. All right, I'm ready. Are you ready? If you enjoyed the content, please like and subscribe. Join us while we try the brand new menu out at Mama Melrose here at Disney's Hollywood Studios. All right, so as we enter Disney's Hollywood Studios, we're going to have to head down Hollywood Boulevard right in front of the Chinese Theater. We'll be making a left. Then we're going to head right past the Hyperion Theater, make a right at Backlot Express. We're going to bear right at Star Tours. So this area right here is Grand Avenue. If we head underneath that bridge, it'll take us to Star Wars Galaxy's Edge, but that's not where we're going. We have to make a left right before the bridge, and then it'll take us to Muppets Courtyard. You can see Ms. Piggy as a fountain of the Statue of Liberty Pizza Rizzo over in the back, and Muppet Vision 3D. We're gonna have to bear down this little corridor over here to get to Mama Melrose. I just realized we haven't eaten at that new stand called Hydraulics yet, Sam. It didn't just look that great. Yeah. If you guys want to see us try that out, let us know in the comments. All right, and we've made it to Mama Melrose Ristorante Italiano. It, to the right, you can actually see Muppet Vision 3D letting out. To the left, you'll find the check-in desk. And to the left of the check-in desk is actually where you can find the stroller parking. All right, we just got a text that our table is ready. All right, we are heading in, and you can see those twinkling lights we were talking about it before. Beautiful interior here. Oh, perfect spot. All right, we are seated. Sam is checking out the menu. And I did want to bring up that the waiting area on the interior is adorned with pictures of movie stars that have supposedly dined here. There is a lot of new things to unpack on this menu, so let's take a look. All right, so they've changed up mostly everything, but this mushroom artichoke cheese dip is brand new, as well as the house garlic bread. The mozzarella sticks are not new, but they're very different. They used to be little circles when we had them last time, but they are spirals and made in-house currently. Also, these marinated olives, which are a vegan dish, are brand new. And as for the entrees, the new options are the fettuccine alfredo with shrimp, the mama's Italian pasta with chicken, the rigatoni bolognese. This is what I have my eye on. Uh, they also have a braised pork asabuco. That's the other thing I have my eye on. And a prosciutto and honey pizza. And on the back, you can see the drink menu. It does look like they have wine flights, some specialty drinks like 
Mama's Margarita, sparkling wine, white wine, red wine, some beers on draft, and of course they have the Coca-Cola based products you can find in pretty much any Disney restaurant, as well as some Cafe Mocha and frozen cappuccino, as any Italian restaurant should have. All right, so the first appetizer is here, the hand-breaded mozzarella sticks. They are finally barrels of mozzarella sticks. They come with a lemon aioli and a traditional marinara sauce. I do remember the sauce here tasting somewhat canned, somewhat metallic. Are you telling me mama's using canned sauce, Jason? I hope not. All right, you want to see how this cheese pull is? That looks fresh. That definitely looks fresh to me. Yeah. Look at that break. Look at that hang. Yeah, you got you got the Italian flair. I don't know how I feel about aioli. They look really good. They are really good. They look really fresh. I like the breading a lot. I like whatever seasoning they're using inside of the breading. And they definitely, they taste fresh. I mean, the sauce is okay. The sauce is not the star. A little greasy though. My hands are greasy. Yeah, they are a little greasy, but I feel like that happens in mozzarella. I'm not this, but I'm gonna give it a try. Giving the aioli a try. Is the marinara better? Surprisingly, I think that's better than the marinara. Does the marinara still have that like metallic kind of like can taste? The sauce is nothing special, but this is actually, it's pretty good. It gives a little zing, a little, Lemon zing. Lemon zest. Oh, yeah, that was that. that's what I meant to say, zest. I think these are good. Um, I'm gonna give these an eight. Yeah, eight's really good. I mean, we've been eating mozzarella sticks in New York our whole lives, so I feel like eight, that's, that's pretty high marks. All right, so I wanted to try it too on camera because we both grew up eating mozzarella sticks. Ooh. You should have did a pull contest. Yeah, right? I think you won. Yeah, mine was about two feet. But mine was also cooler because we waited a little bit. So I'm not sure if it's fair. I'm going to try it without any sauce first. Tons of mozzarella on that. There is some grease, but I don't think it's too greasy. The grease adds to the flavor. Let's try the marinara sauce out. Somewhat rustic, but definitely still like canned, pre-made. Not against it. It's not the worst sauce I ever had. You're right. This. And I, I, I didn't think I would like that at all. I'm gonna be a little bit more conservative. I'm gonna go seven. Um, I do like them a lot. Seven's still elevated. I've just had really good, like, crispy mozzarella sticks. And I feel like with the mozzarella stick, you want this kind of crunch when you bite down. It's still very soft on the outside. You can tell they're handmade, though, and made in-house. So they are elevated, but there's just certain things I think that they could do better. So that's why it's not quite eight or a nine for me. But I do like that lemon zest. It does add a little difference to it, you know? It is a Italian restaurant in a Muppets courtyard. So True. I'm giving them props. Mama knows what she's doing. All right, so this is actually on the dinner menu, but we got it as an appetizer. Just so you know, they do make these pizzas fresh to order. So if you get them as an appetizer, you're gonna be waiting a little bit, about 15, 20 minutes. So we ha we're patient. Uh, you can actually see them making them right in the open kitchen plan. The open kitchen's cool, because they actually have some ladles on top of the lights. Uh, it adds a little atmosphere to that. And this is the prosciutto and honey pizza. It's Parmesan ham, red chili flakes. It looks really good. The crust looks really good, right, Sam? It does. What kind of cheese is it? I don't know. I thought it was mozzarella. It, doesn't, it just says prosciutto. Oh, but it's Parmesan. I, I mean, it's definitely got more than Parmesan on it. I don't know. I'm, I don't know which piece to take. They did it's cut it a little weird. There's like a weird centerpiece there. Ooh. Oh my God. There's red, it's, the, it's the, the red flakes. flakes. <laughs> we should have got it without the flakes. It's good. The crust is like very delicate. Like it's very light. It needs to be cheesier though. I really do like the little sweetness from the honey. With the salty prosciutto. Like it's a good combination. It just needs more cheese. But I do like this. And, mm. The crust looks good. Even though it's pizza, it feels lighter. I'm gonna give this a seven. Seven sounds good. Definitely for a fresh made pizza. I wanted to say, I really do just like the decor of this restaurant, period. Uh, they have like fake hanging vegetables from the ceiling. They have like stained glass kind of lanterns or lights, but they also have all different lights in here. It does look kind of makeshift. It feels like early Disney. Uh, I'm gonna eat this pizza now. I wanna eat this weird centerpiece right here. 
This doesn't isn't supposed to exist. It's the tiniest pizza ever. The honey with like the prosciutto goes really well with it. It's like honey and ham. It's like a honey glazed ham type of feeling. Oh, and there's a little spice right at the end. Let me try the actual pizza. I personally, I could do without the flakes. The flakes are make give it like a hot honey type of feel. Like something you would, you know, like hot honey chicken. That's very popular right now. The crust does feel very flaky. It's so light. I do think that the spice elevates the honey a bit and adds to the flavor of the prosciutto. Cheese is very light too. I'm gonna agree with your seven. I, think I, I don't feel like this is like pizza though. This is not like, maybe I just think of like a Napolitan or something like that from being in New York. Uh, I do like the crust though, and I do think it's probably better than what we had last time. And it feels different. It feels unique to anything else you get in Disney. So I like it. And I'm definitely going to eat more of it. And I'm not sure how good the honey flakes are for my stomach, but I'm going to keep eating it. Wanted to give you guys an update as we ate a bit more of this. I think this white pasty stuff, <coughs> oh, excuse me, that's that spice, is ricotta. It doesn't say it on the menu, but it definitely tastes like that. All right, so the entrees are here. I got the rigatoni bolognese. And Sam, you got the Mama's Italian pasta with chicken. This is bucatini pasta, kale, roasted garlic, cherry tomatoes, and parmesan. You can substitute the chicken for shrimp for an additional charge. And they did have this dish previously, but instead of bucatini, it was fettuccine, and apparently it used to come with artichokes, and people didn't like the artichokes, so they replaced artichokes with kale. Which, do people like kale more than artichokes? I like artichokes more than kale, but maybe I'm in the minority. Me too. Let us know in the comments if you like kale or artichokes more. I enjoy both. I'm not down in kale. It does look hearty. It's pupatini slippery. I gotta get a tomato. This is really good. It has, there's something like citrusy in it. And the bucatini, because bucatini has like a hole in it, and if you're familiar with bucatini, the sauce and the flavoring goes in the pasta. I don't think the chicken um, is really the star here. The chicken is just pretty, it's pretty average, but everything else is really like making up for the lack of the chicken. The tomatoes are really good. It has a lot of flavor and it doesn't feel too heavy. And I think bucatini was the right pasta choice. But I, I kind of miss artichokes. I like artichokes. I think there's like lemony zest to it. This is really good. I'm gonna give this a seven. If it had better chicken, I would go higher. So far I wanna say, I do think that the food this time is better than the food we had last time. I would definitely get this again. I really do like it. All right, so this is supposed to be really good. This is my entree. It's the rigatoni bolognese. It's the Parmesan right on top. I think there's beef inside of it. They have a pork and like sausage mix. Um, I don't think that the rigatoni is made fresh in house, but this is supposed to be like one of their new signature dishes. So I feel like I had to get, how to get it. I'm trying to get all the flavors in there. Let's try it out. A lot of good savoriness with the sausage mixed with the pork. It's very moist, not dry. Um, the sauce on this is better than the salt and marinara sauce that we had. I feel like when you mix the meat with the sauce, it gives it a better flavor. Have I had better rigatoni bolognese? Yes. Is this the best Italian restaurant in Disney? Absolutely not. No offense. I'm Melrose, you're cool. But like it's not El Molino, you know. Um, and there's another place that a lot of people said we need to try too, right, Sam? Ravello. At the Four Seasons, right? Yeah. People say we gotta go to Ravello, which I agree. We have to go to Ravello. Uh, we'll try to get there. This is good. I'm sure Ravello would be better. I'm gonna give it a seven. I think it's solid. I'm very, I'm happy that I got it, and I think you'll be happy to get it too. All right, so we have retrieved the dessert menu. They've kept some of the same stuff. So they have the mini cannoli trio. They have the tiramisu, but uh, this pesticati cream tart is apparently new. The flourless chocolate cake is new and the goat cheese mousse tart interests me. I think this is what we're probably gonna get. They also have gelato and a cherry chocolate cake. On the back, you can find dessert cocktails. They have a tiramisu martini, which sounds very, sounds very interesting. Chocolate martini, which we've had in Hershey Park. I'm not sure if you'd beat a Hershey Park chocolate martini. Bella cappuccino. They also have some sparkling dessert wines, liqueurs, and of course, you gotta enter coffee with an Italian meal. All right, so dessert is served. I got the goat cheese tart, and Sam, you got that flourless chocolate cake. We we're gonna share one dessert, but I couldn't help myself. Is that you wanted this and made me order it? Yeah, no, I wanted both. So, but Sam's gonna try that because she doesn't like goat milk, I don't feel like. 
I don't know. It does look very pretty though, yours, and I like the honeycomb on top. This does look very nice, but what is in, what is this one in? I mean, I guess this flower is chocolate cake, right? Almond flour, and it has a vanilla gelato and a blood orange sauce. It's the sauce right down there. No idea. That's a crumb. Salacious crumb. It is very cold. The plate is like freezing. They definitely keep that in the freezer. A freezer fridge, I should say. Really? So do you think like the the orange doesn't go well with the dark chocolate? I didn't get orange in that bite because it had like the tip. So both of these are brand new. Is it very bitter? It doesn't taste like cake. It tastes like fudgy. Like a, well, that's because it's flourless. Yeah, it's like a, it kind of tastes more like a brownie, and it's just pretty. It's just pretty blah. Like it's. The chocolate Valjarona cake is uh, kind of like a flourless chocolate cake that they have over at California Grill. We like that a lot. It's just not it. Like, Do you want to try it with some ice cream? The chocolate flavor is just, it's just very plain. Never heard of chocolate described as a plain flavor. It's just very like mediocre. It almost tastes like, like a pre-packaged brownie, you know. Oh, that's sad. It's nothing, like it's just nothing special. How's the gelato? The gelato's good. A little, when you do get a little bit of that orange, it is good, but the chocolate itself is just, it's very lackluster to me. I'm not, I'm not impressed at all. It doesn't taste bad, but it just tastes, give it a five. Very average. Very average, very five. All right, so this is the goat cheese tart. It's got honeycomb on top. It has some, uh, these are... Blackberries. Blackberries, blackberries, I think blueberries. I'm like, those aren't blueberries. And obviously this is goat cheese. Goat cheese is very creamy. Um, it doesn't, I don't feel like, has much of like a sour taste as like a cream cheese that comes with like standard milk does. So I want to see how this, how this tastes. And the crust also on this tart looks very good. They said this isn't too sweet though. Oh, look at, you see how creamy that is? Like average cheesecake, I mean, unless you whip it, really isn't generally that creamy. Well, I was wrong about the sourness. There is a lot of sourness in that. And I feel like she said there's a very strong like goat cheese aftertaste. Yeah, it tastes wow. That is, it tastes like goat cheese turned into a tart. With the honey, it's pretty good. I need more honey though. You can see the majority of this tart does not have that honey on it, so you lose a lot of the sweetness. Let me try it with a blackberry. Weird, not for me. It's well, if you want a mediocre uh, flourless cake, you can have it. Very, very goat cheesy. And I like goat cheese. But it just tastes like it's dessert to me. It tastes like a cheese. Um, needs more honey. I'm gonna go five, two. Yeah, the yeah, desserts were not it. All right, so I wanna say I think it was better in some ways and not so much in others. Uh, is it better than Olive Garden now? I kinda like Olive Garden, I'm not gonna lie. Um, I really like Olive Garden's breadsticks and I like their salads. I think they have like staples you kind of go to. Uh, they're trying to be, I feel like, more Italian here. And I think in certain ways, they did feel that way. Um, I did like the bolognese quite a lot. I do think the one thing that was missing from it or the element that was missing from it was maybe like fresh made pasta. That was definitely not fresh made pasta. It was good. It was a bit al dente. Uh, Sam, what did you think of your dish? Well, we also noticed halfway through oh, that yeah. they got rid of the bread service because they did add a garlic bread appetizer so yeah. off the what you'll be noticing at the disney sit-down restaurants now uh, almost none of them in park restaurants have bread services anymore it's something we've been trying to be noticing dwindling down yeah and i We're like bread service police yeah well no but the thing is We're always bringing it up. i do feel like bread is kind of like the starter of your meal it makes it more palatable it kind of uh prepares your palate for what you're about to have and i think for how much you're paying at these disney restaurants the premium to be in disney i think you deserve a little bread service. That's just me, you know? And I think each bread All service right. should be a little different. Let's end the rant. <laughs> I liked my pasta dish. I thought the appetizers were the best part. Yeah, I would agree. Well, other... I think I liked, so I liked the mozzarella sticks. The pizza was okay to me. I, thought the, I think the pizza's good. I think actually yeah. the pizza is one of their 
The stronger, crust is really good, yeah. One that, of their stronger, you know, menu items, in my opinion. That fiery brick oven, yeah, you know, like, they're, they're fresh made. That the isn't elevated to me. Yeah. And this did come out to $108 with pass holder discount. Mm -hmm. So I didn't think the entrees were on the expensive side yeah. for what they were. Like, it's not like there was a ton of protein in my pasta dish. Yeah, and the desserts were not good. Uh, oh my, yeah, I feel like I we, ended, we, we kind of ended on that. I feel like we started strong, and then I think we kind of ended weak with yeah. those desserts. Uh, the goat cheese tart tasted like you should have had it on like a charcuterie board. Uh, I would probably bring it out to like a three or a four. It did not feel like it was a dessert. I don't even And try. I did have some of your flourless chocolate cake and it did taste very average. It was just weak. Yeah. And we're usually pretty positive. Uh, but we did, again, like the appetizers and entrees, maybe head out somewhere else for some dessert here. They do have some pretty good ice cream places to be found here and some very good desserts, including a Jack Jack cookie num num that can be found over in. Hollywood Studios. So maybe go over there instead of here for dessert. I certainly wasn't disappointed by the appetizers or the entrees. And the the aesthetic, the atmosphere is always on point in Mama Melrose. And we had a really amazing server. Yes, as well. she was great. And if you enjoyed the content, please like and subscribe. Liking will really help our channel grow. It pushes this video out to the stratosphere of the YouTube algorithm. It helps other people find the video subscribing. It also helps our channel grow. Hit the bell notification so that way you're notified every time when videos come out, which is when, Sam? Every Monday. Thanks so much for watching. Don't count the days. The days count. We will see you next time. That's all, folks. There is a bit of a Star Wars celebration here over at Hollywood Studios today, so we're actually going to check out the new Star Tours scenes, which feature the Mandalorian, Grogu, Ahsoka Tano. We're excited. We're also going to be in Disneyland for Star Wars celebration. Hint, hint. Ooh. <laughs> Those people you see scrolling up on the screen right now, those are the names of our members. You can become a member too for as low as $1.99 a month. Those are the people that really help us make the magic happen. But anyone who likes, watches, subscribes. You're all part of this. You're all part of this and we all really appreciate you. Yes, and if you want to keep watching more videos like these, check out these videos over here. This thing used to squirt water. I would not like that to happen. Yeah, I confidently think it is. It is that is over, that era.